All right, I wanted to do a, uh, another video on sharpening. This time, it's actually not more of a sh not really sharpening, but more of a repair. This is a this is a Varvil and Sons coffin smoother I bought um, right around I guess right around a year ago, and strangely enough, usually when you get these old planes. The body of the plane usually needs the work, and the iron is usually in a little bit better shape, at least from what I've run into. In this case, the plane itself was actually in really good shape, but the iron had a bad skew to it, and it hadn't been sharpened properly in a long time. And from what it looked like to me, it looked like somebody that Maybe the previous owner used a power grinder or at least a wheel grinder of some kind on it and just missed around it and just did not do a very good job. I um, I did get this plane actually very sharp, but the plane iron is very sharp, but you can't you're not gonna be able to see this, but what's been happening is whenever I run over anything that has a little bit of a rough green, I start getting these little teeth or if you want to call them little ridges that it's telling me that the steel up the front at the front of the of the iron here is not um it maybe it lost its temper or it just needs to be ground back more so what I'm gonna do here two things I normally don't do first thing I'm gonna use this this very toss honing guide and Secondly, I set it to have a micro bevel. Now, normally I don't like I don't like when a plane or a chisel or a plane iron has a micro bevel. It's except for two exceptions. One is if you're using a paring chisel and you're using it for real fine work, and the other thing is for a smooth plane where you're you're, you're taking the finest shavings with it. So, in this case, I will use a micro bevel. Another note is when I bought this plane, I didn't really buy it to use as an everyday, um, you know, everyday tool. It was more, more along the lines of something I wanted to you know, just buy to have, just almost like a collection. But um, I do want it to work, and I have used it on occasion. It actually does a really nice job, so it's definitely worth fixing. I'm hoping that this only takes a few minutes because if you're like me you don't want to watch another 10 minute long sharpening video so this time I'm going to start off with a coarse grit die plate and die sharp plate and hopefully get this bad steel ground off pretty quickly This plane also has this plane iron also has a camber on it, but I'm not going to overly camber at this. I'm not going to really worry about cambering it at the moment. I did add the camber when I got it, but for now I just want to get this to the point where it will hold an edge for longer than about 10 or 20 passes without toothing up. So here we go. Like I said, this is already, already set to micro bevel. And I'm hoping that really grinds down the bad steel quickly. And on another note, I actually received a couple of compliments um, via email from my the last video I put up. One was, I'm not sure if it was a man or a woman, but they said that I look a lot younger than they than I thought they thought I would look. Now, I'm not exactly sure. I mean, if they thought I was 60, <laughs> then, you know, so what? But I, I'll take that as a compliment. And the other one was from a, 
you know, my boy was a woman. She said that I'm not, I'm a lot. I come off a lot nicer than I. <laughs> I come off a lot nicer than she thought I would. Uh, yeah, it's. You know, I guess the reality is a lot different than what you read. I. Uh, everybody likes to think they're a nice guy. I've always been a pretty nice guy. But um, all I am is honest. I'm on the blog. I don't. I'm not insulting. I'm just honest. Some people, some people would prefer, you know, what you would call maybe pandering or false, false compliments. That's not me. I, like I said, I don't believe in insulting anybody, but I do believe in honesty. And I believe in honesty on all fronts. Meaning, if I'm told to buy, if I, I should say, shouldn't say told, but if somebody recommends to me a book, magazine, woodworking video, what have you, I expect honesty when it comes to that recommendation. I, uh, I don't like, I don't like bullshit, for lack of a better word, and there's a lot of bullshit going around. And woodworking just like everywhere else. That woodworking's not immune to it. But there's there's a saying that if you're honest, it's difficult. It's an honest person is a difficult person to lie to and I believe that. And I can whatever gifts I have, I'm not many, but one of them is I can I know when somebody's full of it. And there's a lot of that everywhere, including woodworking. See what we have here. Good news. Their micro bevel is nice and straight. And I have a and I have a bar across the back, but I'm not, I'm still gonna take a few more passes. Once again, this is the most boring part of woodworking. I don't care what anybody says. Maybe if I if I would work more. Um, I would appreciate sharpening more. I just wish I had the time. The good news is, I, uh, well, I shouldn't say good news, but I've been woodworking a little bit more at night because I kind of messed up my right shoulder a little bit, so I haven't been going to the gym as much lately. And considering I'm a pretty restless person, I found myself wandering into the garage a little bit more than I normally do during the work week. I wish I could show you this. Yeah, that's just, that's just not going to show up on this camera. Unfortunately. But it is almost, almost straight across. Is that right now? The funny thing, another thing with these duo sharp stones, I don't, I like them, but I wouldn't use this as my only source of sharpening. To me, they are almost a prep stone for the water stones. Now, I know there are finer grit versions of these stones, and there's also other brands. But they're really expensive and out of way out of my budget. If I were a professional, of course, I'd probably have something like that. But at the same time, this grit, which is supposedly a heavy stock removal grit, doesn't remove as much stock as I think it should. As much material, as much steel, whatever you want to call it. But it does. It does work. And as far as this very toss and guide, it's I like it because it is pretty versatile. But what I don't like about it, well two things, you can't really add a camber with it, not not really. Not this version at least. And secondly, if you don't really crank down on this screw, it will move on you. Especially if you're being heavy handed. And I do tend to be heavy handed sometimes when I sharpen. Not on purpose, it's just 
one of those things. But the good news with these these um, duo sharp stones, they supposedly will really never go out of true. I don't know how true that is or not, but I, I can't imagine that I would ever put a groove in it or work it. Maybe somebody who sharpens for a couple of hours a day might, but that's not me. Almost there. A little bit more. I could go to the other grid actually, no problem, but I'll remove a little bit more material here. Here I am, I'm actually being kind of heavy handed right now. Matter of fact, I'm going to turn this around. I, I do that out of habit. I, I need you right, I need you. It's just something that's kind of ingrained into me. Problem is, I can still see a little, little bit of that toothing. It's hard to tell with these gloves on, but I can actually even feel it a little. Take a few more passes and I'm going to go to the next higher grip. See what that does. This is where I sort of wish that I trusted grinding wheels, but I did. I don't like, personally, I don't like hollow grounds at all here. Hollow grind to me doesn't, is, uh, I just don't see the need for it anywhere. In particular on chisels, which I think a chisel should always have a flat bevel. You can make the case for a hollow grind for a smooth plane, but on something like a jack plane or a jewelry plane, I don't think a hollow grind is the best solution. But, I see people hollow drawing chisels and I just think that's not very smart. Unless, once again, if you're using that chisel for only the very the finest work. But if you're using it like I would to chop mortises, um, remove, remove dovetail waste, then I, I want that chisel to have a strong bevel on it. Okay, this is looking a lot better. A lot more material that got removed for whatever reason by... And I can still see a little bit of that toothing. Which I'm not too happy about. A little bit more, a couple more pieces. I can actually see the barrel on the back of this. Matter of fact, I'm going to do something I normally wouldn't do. I remove it. Maybe that will help. I also got another compliment from my, my good friend Grant Hayda. He told me that I look like a work of art. So thanks, buddy. I should say thanks, mate. I appreciate it. Okay, much better. So let's try. Hopefully the next thing is I don't need nearly as much work as I just put in on this one.
Got a bit of glass there. Well, once again, it looks better. I was actually planning on doing this a few weeks ago, but I figured like, maybe I should save it for a, or, for a video, which I'm kind of glad I did now. And I'm wondering if my wife is upstairs hearing me talk to myself and think she maybe thinks I'm losing my mind. And once again, I had a very long day at work. very bright eyed at this time of night. Okay, so that's a huge improvement. Just a few more passes on this side should do it. sit down at all when I work but I wish I could actually right now. I wonder if I could. It's not very comfortable. My back feels a little better. There's enough of that. I wrote a post one time about workbench height. There was a there was a trend at one point, maybe there still is, where everybody was building these super low benches. This bench here is just just about 34 inches tall. I'm right around 5'11", a hair over 5'11". And I wish this bench was another, at least an inch higher. But theoretically, this bench should have been probably, if I went by certain guidelines, Standing relaxed, just with my arms at my side, this bench should have been about two inches lower according to some guidelines that people put forth. And if this bench was that low, I wouldn't be able to work on it. And right there, to me, conventional wisdom is thrown right out the door. Why were work benches lower? 200 years ago, I don't know. I have a feeling it's because people were shorter. You know, an anthropologist might tell you different, but I think I read somewhere where the average person in the 18th century was, the average man was about five foot six. Of course he'd want a lower bench. Uh, of course, there were, there were also tall people. That's, I'm not saying that everybody was short, but on average. Okay. I think we are good with that stone. I have a bar across the back, and I have a nice even grind across the front here. At least that looks even. I have a little bit better lighting in here. For sure, but I don't. Okay, now I'm going to switch to the water stands. Okay, a thousand hertz there, which has seen better days than us. But this this thing does remove the material quickly. Doesn't seem like it would, but it really does. I was pretty amazed the first time I ever used a water stain to see how fast it polished. And you can feel it work too, which is really nice. On that dye plate, you don't feel it working. At least I don't. Once again, like I said, I don't sharpen as much as somebody who does this for a living would. 
So that stuff is maybe a little bit better than mine. I don't know, you probably can't see in the video, but going back to this workbench thing, I'm hunched, kind of hunched over, which is not comfortable. I wish, well, hindsight being what it is, I guess. But if I ever make another workbench, I actually hope to maybe. Um, it will be definitely an inch higher, it will be 35 inches. Possibly even 35 and a half. I was at a woodworking show, they had a 38 inch bench, and it seemed, it was, it seemed okay, I, didn't, I mean, I only messed with it for a little bit, but it worked great, I saw, I, I, um, I was using a saw, that I practiced, practiced sawing a tenon, and that was actually very nice, having the bench up higher like that. It might be a little bit more diff difficult to chop the mortises on a bench that tall, unless you're in the 6.2, 6.3 range. Yeah, this looks much better. Let's hope it actually cleans a board smoothly. Almost there with this. Normally, what I would do when I'm when I'm done is clean these stents off, but I'm not going to do that tonight. It's actually getting kind of late. Getting a little quicker now. can't see any more of the toothing and hopefully that's a good sign. A couple more passes just to, put it, to keep the stone even. I'll go to the 8,000 grit. They say you should only take a handful of passes on this thing, but I never, I always take more than the recommendation. Should have wiped off the roller before I did that. You can see once again I'm sharpening on a workbench, which I, as I said before, I usually sharpen outside. We have a low wall in our front yard, and I'll sharpen on there usually, especially if the weather's nice. One of these days maybe I'll have an actual workshop with a little sharpening section in it. There's just not enough room in here for something like that. Okay, 
I'm amazed. I can feel the bar all the way across. Not polished all the way across there. Just about. Like I said, with this sharpening guide, you have to be careful about putting too much pressure. You have to keep the pressure very even. Because no matter how hard you crank down on this screw, it will move. Not the screw, but the iron in it. nicer. Sorry about this on this. Trying to feel what I can't see. I'm almost tempted to lift it up and do it by hand now. actually hot in here considering it's 48 degrees out and we're in the middle of May last year on Memorial Day it was 90 degrees this year they're forecasting a high of about 65 I hope they're wrong Almost. Like I said, this port is very boring. I'm not sure there was a way around it. It's really not them. Which is why I don't like to sharpen. Particularly iron. It needs a lot of work like this one did. I could borrow somebody's Tormac machine for an afternoon. I get a lot done. Things that I need to be. Scrubbed really good. Set it black. That's something I normally wouldn't do. Oh, and the cleaner's not going to hurt anything. Almost. I've said that five times, but I'm not kidding. What I should do is put a little bit more water on here. This is already ground down. I'm just trying to polish it. And that's pretty good. I think I'm going to stop there. At this point, I'm going to take it out of the guide. 
Okay, when I'm done with that, I will put some 3 in 1 oil on it. My smaller strap, the iron's too big. They're too wide, I should say. So I have this little piece of leather. And this one does need to be charged. I have a piece to make a bigger strap that's been sitting in my sitting in my tool bag over there since Christmas. I just haven't gotten around to it. Looking pretty shiny and hopefully sharp. And that's not too bad. I will use this to remove the bear. Hold it this. And let's see. See what we got. Get up the mess. Get a little, a little rearrangement here. As I said, my wife parts in here, and she always had trouble opening an upper car door. So I moved my tool cart next to the bench, which is nice because it's, it's right within arm's reach now. And I got rid of a few things that I really didn't need over the weekend. I've never really been all that great at setting this plane. I actually haven't used it very much. Try to sight down it. Let's hope it doesn't make a liar out of me. I might get some decent shavings. I think I will. Let's try this. Let's see what we get. We got another strap board. Let's try this one. Let's see if I'm getting any of this. Things are nice and thin. A little bit uneven, though. This is not a joiner plane, by the way. center and let's try let's try cleaning this board wish I was a little bit more organized 
Sorry, I'm casting a shadow over there. Not looking at the camera like I should be. This is the Wonder Dog. This needs, this needs a little bit 3102. Actually, you know what? Let's chip the Wonder Dog. A little heavier than it looks like. Still not bad. Not full length. Back this up a little bit. No, I'm not taking any. Still a little thin. There we go. Nice thin shape, I should say. Full length. See through. And here's the real. Let's look at the iron. Well, the iron looks, well, so far it looks great. I don't know if you can make that out or not. Probably not, but I like to try to show it anyway. So there you go. That went better than I thought, to be honest. I might actually post this video. I actually got it to work. So if you ever want to get a coffin smooth and plane, remember, you can fix them. Now, I, need, I probably need to flatten that again. It, um, it's nice and flat, I should, it's nice and flat, but there's a bit of a high point right there. Having a high point in front of the mouth is actually, from what I gather, a little bit better than having one at the back of the mouth. But I can take care of that over the weekend. And it's very, it is very, I mean, we're talking less than a millimeter. Very, very, very close. So it should be easily fixable. But anyway, that's it. That's fixing the coffin smooth plane iron. Hope you liked it.